Well, as we mentioned at the top of the show, Pastor Al Elmore brought to us a very strong message at the National Day of Prayer on May 5th at the UNOH Events Center. He cites statistics and examples that paint a picture of the path the United States has taken since God and prayer was removed from the schools. Here now with more on that is Pastor Al Elmore. Two months ago, my wife and I had the privilege of going to Seoul, Korea to attend an international global missions conference. On a Saturday, we were able to go on a tour to the DMZ. That's where the South Korea and North Korea soldiers actually face one another. That happened to be the day that two missiles were fired. It was uneasiness. But can I let you in on something today? The throne is still occupied. And his name is King Jesus. And he's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we never, ever need to forget that. Our theme for today is Wake Up America. And our verse is Isaiah 58, 1, which says, Shout it aloud, do not hold back, Raise your voice like a trumpet. This reminds me of the passage in Jeremiah 6. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it. And you will find rest for your souls. But you said we will not walk in it. I appointed watchmen over you and said, Listen to the sound of the trumpet. But you said we will not listen. Therefore, hear, you nations, you who are witnesses, observe what will happen to them. I am bringing disaster on this people because they have not listened to my words and have rejected my law. Your burnt offerings are not acceptable. Your sacrifices do not please me. I will put obstacles before this people. Parents and children alike will stumble over them. Neighbors and friends will perish. Let me say a word about our nation's founding fathers and the old past, America's heritage. This is where we came from. Many of you are mindful of this, but listen. All of this is documented. 52 of the 55 people who worked on the Constitution of America were evangelical Christians. They were followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. The old past, the government, our founding fathers were Christians. Let me share some quotes from three founding fathers so you will know where we came from. Patrick Henry, most known for his statement, give me liberty or give me death. But he said something far greater than that. He said it cannot be emphasized too strongly and too often that this nation was not found by religion but Christians. John Quincy Adams, a congressman for 18 years and president of our nation said, the highest glory of the American Revolution is this bound together, the principles of Christianity and the principles of civil government. And he went on to say, now don't miss this, America's Constitution was made for moral and religious people. It will not work for any other people. John Jay, our first Supreme Court Justice, said, Providence has given to our people the choice of their rulers and it is our duty and our privilege to choose and prefer Christians as our leaders. You see, we somehow wonder how America became the most blessed land in all of the world. While we've never really known a foreign invasion. Why? Because of the old paths that we walked in. In fact, the University of Houston decided to do a study to see why our government has lasted for over 200 years. In the same time period, France has had seven different forms of government and Italy, 48. So what the University of Houston did, understand a secular university, was gather 15,000 writings of our founding fathers. They sifted through them and came up with 3,154 that they decided to study to see what was the genius of the government that has lasted in America for over 200 years. This is what they found as they studied those 3,000 documents. 16 times more than these men were quoted, the Bible was quoted. 34% of all the quotes in those documents came from the word of the living God. 
Then they also found out that 60% of the other quotes of these founding fathers derived their source from the Word of God, and this was the amazing conclusion by a secular university, that 94% of the writings of the founding fathers were directly affected by the Word of God. And they said the reason that our government has survived and flourished for these 200 plus years as a republic with a constitution is because it was directly founded on the principles of the Word of Almighty God. Now that is the ancient paths that we walked in at one time. Have you wondered where we got the idea of the three branches of government? The legislation, the executive, the judicial. Did you know the founding fathers got it from the word of God? It was upon this scripture in Isaiah 33, 22, that they were guided to form the three separate branches of government. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. It is he who will save us. The Lord is our judge, judicial. The Lord is our lawgiver, legislator. The Lord is our king, executive. Our founding fathers were committed followers of Jesus, and our government was based upon the principles of the living God. That's why it has stood the test of 200 plus years. What about education? For 200 years in America, there was a book that was used in the public schools called the New England Primer. From 1690 to 1890, they were all in a one-room schoolhouse, and the book included the alphabet and history. One book. They had an interesting way of teaching the alphabet. A, a wise son makes a glad father. A foolish son makes great heaviness for his mother. B, Better is a little fear of the Lord than a great treasure without. C, come unto Christ, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hmm, interesting stuff, isn't it? Our founding fathers and the foundation of their government were distinctly unapologetic and aggressively Christian. Our education was filled and saturated with the Word of God. Well, when did we leave the old path? It was June 1962 to June of 1963. This is when we left. And I want to show you what happened since we left those old paths. Prayer and Bible reading were removed from the public schools of our land during this time. Never before had it been challenged or questioned. Two suits, Engel versus Vitali and Abington versus Shem. In these two suits, with no precedence whatsoever to support the Supreme Court decision, they handed down these rulings. That was when America left the old paths. In Engel versus Vitali, they removed prayer from school. The prayer they ruled that couldn't be prayed was only 24 words. Almighty God, we acknowledge our dependence upon Thee. We beg Thy blessings upon us, upon our parents, upon our teachers, and our Amen. In Abington versus Shemp, they declared school-sponsored Bible reading in public schools to be unconstitutional. Church and state had never been used. No precedence whatsoever. The Supreme Court said if the Bible was read without an explanation, it could cause psychological harm. Dear God, the books in school today can cause a lot more than psychological harm. Amen? Amen. This is when they took the Bible out of school. At the time they did, 3% of people in America didn't believe in God. And 97% did. And what they said is, we will ignore the 97% and go with the three. As I close, let me show you what happened when we left the old paths. This is what blew me away. David Barton researched some things prior to Bible reading and prayer in public schools. You say, what about family? Up until 1963, the divorce rate had declined for 15 straight years. Between 1963 and 1983, it tripled every year from the day we took it out of public schools. But there's the, the one that blew my mind is this. You remember in that 24-word prayer, they prayed for God to bless the families and their education? 
Up until 1963, the ACT scores had never fluctuated but a little bit every two years. It had remained the same for 20 years prior, but from 1963 to 1981, the ACT scores went down steadily. No explanation except, God, we acknowledge our dependence upon you. We beg your blessings upon our teachers and our schools, but we said, no, you can't have God in school. In 1989, we graduated 700,000 students who could not read their diploma. We left the old paths. Today, some 20 plus years later, 25% of all students in the US, United States of America failed to graduate from high school. What about government? America has always been number one. But let me tell you something with a broken heart. Since 1963, America's number one, all right. In violent crime, teenage pregnancy, divorce, abortions, use of illegal drugs, illiteracy, and many other issues. And every bit of it can be traced back to this. The late pastor, J. Vernon McGee, said this. We don't need a declaration of independence, but a declaration of dependence. Yes, we need to wake up. We need God in this city, and we need God in America again. And let's keep praying, let's keep sharing, and let's shout it aloud. Do not hold back and raise our voices like a trumpet. Amen.